I don't know if you are a fan of the old Star Wars movies or not, but especially in episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, there is an extraordinary scene when Dark Lord Sidious is trying to turn young Jedi Anakin Skywalker to the dark side, and he is explaining to him the nature of the Force, meaning life power. If the one is to understand the great mystery of the Force, he has to study all its aspects, not just the dogmatic or narrow view of the Jedi. If you wish to become a complete and wise leader, you have to embrace a larger view of the Force, meaning how to use even the dark side of the Force in your own favor. And that's what most managers and leaders do. They explore power and influence because that is at the heart of those two disciplines. How to move someone to do something. Yet, leaders usually use a more gentle or polite wording to express the issue. How to make an impact. But that meaning wording is not the end of differences between a leader and a manager. First, let's explore different leadership styles like transformational, charismatic, coalitional, Machiavellian and complementary. Transformational. These people are well known for bringing significant changes into a company. They are capable to create a compelling vision and mission that will change current course of action, to mobilize the people to go that way and keep moving forward until reaching the goal. To better understand how these people operate, they are usually compared to so-called transactional leaders. Transactional leader is focused on a pure exchange process. He finds out what follower wants, meaning needs or deep desire. He clarifies the way how the follower can accomplish his own goal or even providing him with sufficient resources in exchange for the follower to meet specified objectives or performing certain actions for the leader and the company. It's a sort of a trading. Transformational leader is quite different. He is focused on intangible drivers like vision and mission, values and overall business philosophy in order to give his people meaning and inspiration to participate in the change process. Basically, ideology and potentially indoctrination are at the core, are core components. Charismatic. In many aspects, from methodologic perspective, charismatic leaders might look like transformational. They are both focused on lighting the fire and producing commitment within followers through compelling vision and mission and similar. However, charismatic leaders are not purely focused on the company. They are creating a sort of a personal admiration toward the leader by demonstrating huge devotion, enthusiasm and energy and producing positive vibe and emotions all around him. People just love him and that's personal. And because of this, they will do whatever his leader is asking them to do. Coalitional. This style has another perspective. Here the focus is on a power individuals have, inside and outside the company, and how to make a deal with them in order to reach the organizational goal. Unlike transactional approach, here is the point on making numerous coalitions in order to reach a required level of power so you can make the things happen. That's why leaders spend a lot of time with different stakeholders, understanding their individual interests and power. Develop a sort of a roadmap how to reach a buy-in with all relevant stakeholders and create additional coalitions and activities to remove barriers for necessary change. Machiavellian. This just might sound similar to the previous one, but There are some huge differences. Just like the charismatic leader, Machiavellian leader will not be focused only on the company, but gaining his own personal power and influence. Yet, instead of strong positive vibe, this type of a leader is very comfortable using opposite emotions like producing a fear, using deception and punishments and similar. Simply, he is aware that being a leader assumes that the one must be capable to protect his own position and well-being, as much as the position and well-being of the company and its people. He won't be limited only to positive instruments and popularity, but he will use any means necessary. Complementary. 
This one is basically situational approach and it means that a good leader cannot dogmatically pursue one way or another, but he has to assess situation and a context and act accordingly or adjusting his own being to be complementary to the organizational needs, either by mixing approaches or gravitating more to one or another style. As a consequence, It is important to understand drivers that leaders face when choosing the right approach. The most common explanation comes from professors Gary Jones uh, and uh, Kevin Scholz, who have developed a map of stakeholders where the focus is on power each stakeholder has and the degree of interest of each of them. By identifying stakeholder expectations and their power, a leader can better understand political priorities and decide which style to apply, pretty much as in a coalitional style. Although we believe it is a great framework to understand basics, one important ingredient is missing, and that is personal integrity, or leader's character. Simply, one might assess that his boss or a business owner has huge power and interests focused to increase profitability. But the true leader will protect his own people and customers and won't heavily lay off employees or shave their salaries or bonuses or increase prices to customers if he can find another, more creative way to accomplish the task he's hired for. And that is the difference between a leader and a manager. Integrity to stand for others and think outside the box. By doing so, he's creating a change over time that affects the power structure itself. To explain this with polite words, a manager just don't have sufficient integrity for that. He's hiding behind the boss or business owner who hired him for a specific task, his role and his formal authority, and he will cascade the problem to the bottom line, meaning those at the bottom line will suffer the most. Leaders rather think of an engagement on the ground and mobilizing people as a better response in order to find mutually acceptable solutions.